you can see the fracture line up there where it started. Northeast facing about 500 feet wide. Uh, broke out on a very steep slope and then it ran all the way down here. Big boulders of avalanche debris. And then all the way down the valley. A little past that patch of sun. Well, the avalanche uh, is northeast facing. It started out about 9,400 feet. And the fracture line <clears throat> started over there. It's about uh, 500 feet wide. Broke up through there along the ridge. All kind of wind drifted from the strong south winds. Broke up into there where it's about 42 degrees up to 50 degrees right in there. And this is the flank wall that comes down where I'm standing here. So, big avalanche. It, it broke up to about eight feet deep, average about uh, four or five feet deep, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> strong wind loading from the south and loaded in that ridge right there. I suspect where that's where the fracture started and then it ripped out over here and then ran all the way down. It looks like Oh, close to a thousand vertical feet down there. It ran a long way down the valley. You can see my wife Susie skiing down there. She's only halfway down the debris field right now. Uh, and it goes for a long way in this flat light. It's hard to tell where it is. And we have a very hard slab. And then we get down here. We have weak snow on top of the rain crust. This is a very, very hard, stout rain crust. Then we have weak facet of snow under the rain crust, and another rain crust, thin rain crust, and a little bit stronger facet of snow. The avalanche broke right between these two layers, kind of a facet sandwich in between rain crusts. And uh, that was the culprit here. Where the snow pit is, you have to beat on it pretty hard to make it to go, as is typical with these hard slab avalanches um, that are deep slabs. They're difficult to trigger, but if you do trigger them, they pull out very, very large. And who knows what triggered this? Probably all the wind from um, the last storm, wind and snow, drifted in and then overloaded this, and once it started propagating from a thinner snowpack area, it was probably weaker than this, then it just ripped all this stuff out and broke on this layer.